some of the features that you just mentioned sound a bit like Active Mom in All Team Designer. And I think the more experienced All Team Designer users out there will, will notice this. So how exactly does this new tool compare with Active Mom? Does it yeah, replace it or does it complement it? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Active Bomb is a bomb tool what was designed to help engineering team release design bombs with all needed information and capabilities, such as adding alternates, line numbers, custom lines, etc. And seems it works well based on uh, level of adoption and user feedback with React. However, it's embedded into the design tool, Altium Designer. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Altium On Track podcast. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. Today, we're talking with Anant Ava, General Manager of Altium's cloud business, and Demir Karutinov, Product Manager at Altium. Uh, we're going to be discussing one of the new features in Altium Designer 24, and that feature is the Bomb Portal. I got to see a short demo of it uh, before this episode, and so I'm very excited about this new feature, and I hope all of you will be as well. Uh, Demir and Anant, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, likewise. Great to be here, Seth. So uh, what are some of the trends and problems that uh, you're seeing in the electronics development space, Anant? Yeah, so I think the the common root cause is the velocity of the actual development process continues to accelerate and the proliferation of electronics, as everyone probably listening to the podcast, they're no stranger to that. But I think the that's the root cause, but the symptoms show up in, I, I would say, three different areas. Uh, the first one is sort of mapping requirements and intent to the actual design. So when you start going from functional to physical to, to actually the layout, um, are you actually bringing those requirements all the way through, right? Um, the second one, while in the post-COVID era, we've seen supply chain, et cetera, settle down. Supply chain and also just compliance for components, because that's still about 40 to 70% of what you're building, is a big area of focus, um, especially as we're getting into whether it be geopolitical tensions in the Red Sea, all the way to trying to understand your actual full traceability of where the components are coming from down to the fabrication plant. So that's a very big um, area of focus, especially for our aero military customers. Um, the third area I would say is getting into some of these emerging themes like sustainability and getting to down to what is a footprint um, of, of what I'm making and 80% of sort of the sustainability aspects is done in design. And so bringing some of those thoughts, uh, especially when you're thinking about your bomb and you're thinking about sort of orchestrating your entire supply chain, that's come up and starting to come up, especially with DPP requirements coming in Europe. And lastly, it's the collaboration with manufacturing. So we deal a lot uh, for obvious reasons with designers and that handoff process um, and making sure that um, the manufacturers and the components that they're selecting versus what was in design and then people are moving lockstep, that continues to be, be a big focus. But all of these four areas are sort of the symptoms but the root causes, again, just the velocity with which uh, development's happening. Well, given the velocity that you've mentioned, it sounds like that was part of the motivation behind building a lot of these new features in Altium Designer 24. So what was the motivation behind building the bomb portal on Altium 365? Yeah, I think with Altium Designer, I mean, that's obviously where we have our design audience, but we wanted to build a front end where other folks can come in and start collaborating and very specifically your component sort of um, manufacturing personnel or even EMSs. Um, where they're able to actually get that visibility. I think of sort of that bomb as the first sort of physical manifestation where the design is actually born, right? You're in the design to realization space. That's the first front end that everyone can actually look at and collaborate on. And so the motivation for doing this in the cloud and basically having this sort of abstraction layer out of AD, because one of the key things is the bomb portal while you know it's highly functional and highly integrated into all team designer it's mixed cat so we'll actually work with all the cat tools 
And so we really wanted to make sure that we have that one front end where it's not just for designers, but it's also for all of the other satellite professionals that they touch and they're able to come in and collaborate to ensure all the issues that we just talked about um, in the electronic development process, we have a way to mitigate those risks and have those participants come in and, and basically get that view, but also basically get the ability to edit and collaborate on the design itself. So since we're here to learn a bit more about the bomb portal tool, um, Damir, maybe you can tell us, uh, what are some of the bomb management challenges that you've seen across the industry that inspired your team and the development of this new tool? In addition to the standard challenges in BOM and supply chain management for electronics, such as a chip shortage on second sourcing, we noticed that the processes and tools used for that are mostly from 19th. Most still use Excel files and emails for that. So to get the PCB BOM ready for ordering, the procurement team works with exported Excel BOMs. This process typically involves four or five emails with collaboration about three or four contributors who are responsible to make decisions. Yeah. So this takes time to interact and uh, because of the friction happens later in the process, cost of rework, time and money wise is uh, more expensive. Of course, there are companies who well adopted with PLM, MRP and ERP systems, but even the company implemented such systems the level of its adoption is different. So we track the cases when engineering use POM, PDM, but procurement still works with Excel, shared drives, etc. Another common problem is a fragmented approach to accessing and analyzing technical specifications, compliance information, and supply chain data. Typically, procurement experts, quality engineers, and compliance specialists have to navigate through multiple platforms to get the necessary details about the parts. The result in scattered data, yeah, managed across different systems, often leading to limited access to all of these team members. And uh, we can talk also about product teams and OEM specifically. For such teams, the bomb management is not finished once the bomb is released. You should be aware of the manufacturability of your released PCB bomb during the and customer warranty period or product production cycle, which might be not just a few weeks or years. So for such teams, bomb management is an interactive process that is time consuming and error prone due to constantly changing supply chain. For such teams, the manufacturability is a function of a time. So the released bombs needs to be constantly monitored. And uh, in order to manage that, most of the teams still use manual processes for that, which is not so effective. So I would highlight these three common challenges which react across the industry. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Excel files and emails. Um, I will admit I'm guilty of that one, um, but I think it's because of the lack of anything better and everybody else does it. So you're kind of shoehorned into doing this because there just hasn't been anything anything better really. So given all of those issues that you brought up, um, how does Bomb Portal help solve some of those challenges? Yeah. In short, uh, the Bomb Portal helps to take advantage of rich parts and supply chain information to scrub bomb and identify risks for multiple angels. It might be availability, it might be cost, it might be compliance, second sourcing, etc. Next is the collaboration aspect, which is I would say one of the core features of the A365 platform. So with the bomb portal, you can get the advantage of a constant platform for engineering and procurement team in one. So no exported files without context anymore. And you have a common collaboration process in one. And third, I would say that uh, we didn't really visit it, but it's a parts watchdog feature, which is currently in the closed beta but uh, it helps to deduce supply chain risk and ensures continuous production by proactively tracking and providing war warnings for supply chain issues, prompting timely action to avoid any disruptions. Of course, we still offer parts traceability, or we call it where you use it, uh, which simplifies the identification and assessment for, for potential obsolescence issues. So this, these three things. 
you know, some of the features that you just mentioned sound a bit like active bomb in all team designer. And I think the more experienced all team designer users out there will, will notice this. So how exactly does this new tool compare with active bomb? Yeah, does it replace it or does it complement it? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, active bomb is a bomb tool. What was designed to help engineering team release design bombs with all needed information and capabilities, such as adding alternates, line numbers, custom lines, etc. And since it works well based on the level of adoption and user feedback we track. However, it's embedded into the design tool, Altium Designer. And Active Bomb has a strong dependency on the design data. So in order to use it for procurement, you need to share design, all design, and provide access to the design tool. Next is that it helps on the design stage, but not beyond it. For example, you can create the ordering from multiple PCBs which need to be assembled. It's also not effective to use in a production stage. For example, in order to add additional alternates suggested by your contract manufacturer, you need to release the whole design in Active Bomb. The Bomb portal is designed to support bomb management in all electronic product lifecycle stages. So in addition to the generic Bomb 2 capabilities for scrapping, it includes capabilities need to control obsolescence for the release boards, compliance management, and part search capabilities, especially for alternate search. So it's definitely not just a bomb tool, not just a bomb editor as active bomb is. So if we could, let's dig into how the bomb portal works and make this a bit more tangible for, for our listeners. As I mentioned, the bomb portal provides uh, benefits for the different roles and support bomb management in all lifecycle stages. And uh, I can, we can start from the early design stage where bomb portal can speed up the process of prototype bomb scrubbing and preparing it for purchasing. I can share my screen and just share how it works. So we're looking at Altium 365 right now and I see a bunch of projects you have on screen. So I have this uh, proto uh design it has just version 1.1 1. 1. uh if i open it it will open it in a separate tab i believe you still see it mm -hmm. and uh, here is a viewer uh, online viewer which available in a65 there is schematic viewer pcb viewer and of course view of material and as you can see uh, uh engineering was focused only on uh, critical parts so there is no any part number specified for generics such as capacitors, resistors, etc. And uh, in order to <clears throat> uh, prepare it for purchasing, we have the capability to create a managed bomb from the design and scrub it without touching of engineering data, which is uh, might be critical for some cases. Yeah. So once I create a create, once I click to create a managed bomb from design. Uh, procurement is able to select what variant should be used. We also support it. And uh, once the bill of material will be created, it will be stored at the same uh, folder as original uh, design. So it takes uh, a minute. Yeah, so we can refresh the page. And uh, here is uh, my bone, which I just created. If I click on the original uh, design, you will see that now I have a child bombs and link to this uh, procurement bomb created from the design. So let's open this uh, uh, bill of material. And uh, what we see, we see exactly the same bill of material what was created uh, by engineering, but uh, for the part numbers, which are not specified, we see this lamp icon, which means that exact map is not defined, and it's true. We don't have exact part number for this bomb line, but bomb portal tried to analyze all information about this bomb line, about this component, and it has some suggestions. So if I click on this uh, lamp, uh, you see that bomb portal suggested uh, multiple parts, which uh, which uh, has uh, uh, parameters specified in bomb line. 
and they are colored with uh, green. In order to see all, all uh, parameters, we can switch to the advanced parametric search, and we see what data is actually was analyzed and used in order to help engineering uh, work with procurement actually uh, find parts. So you will see that uh, bomb portal analyzed uh, designator and description and tracked that this is capacitor. The capacitance is 100 nanofarad. We detected uh, voltage rating, we tracked uh, case package, and we have suggestions. As a procurement, uh, I will pick up uh, just a component which is in stock with a minimum order quantity, which is also shared here and uh, in stock. Yeah, I would pick up this one. Or no, it's not a good because uh, we have not recommended for new design. I will pick up this one and click use. In this manner, I can scrap all my bomb and any, and uh, also I can uh, even improve it. You see that there is one part which was specified by engineering has obsolete life cycle state. Maybe it's uh, good for the prototyping because this part is in stock, etc. But as procurement, I will try to find alternate and just notify engineering that there is uh, another component available in the market. So, and how I will do this and how Bomb Portal helped me is that we have uh, try alternate search mode, which provide alternates uh, specifically found for this original part number. And we have confidence score, which means that from, from this uh, information, you can understand how this uh, part is compatible with the original one. So this is how uh, bomb portal can speed up the process on bomb scrubbing for proto bombs. Another case, what I would like to share with you is uh, prepare a uh, bomb for production run. For this, uh, I have uh, this uh, bill of material, which is uh, available in my, uh, yeah, I just exported it uh, to Excel file. It has just a few columns, designator, quantity, manufacturer, and MPN. And some of the bomb lines have uh, alternates defined. So let's uh, upload this Excel file into the bomb portal and see how it will work with it. So one second, demo version five, yeah. Once this bomb file will be uploaded into the bomb portal, it will be automatically under the version and revision control as any other managed design, which is also a benefit for data management uh, things. So we have this uh, bomb file uploaded. I open it in bomb portal. Bomb portal ask me if there are alternates defined. I will say yes, because uh, we don't know what exact means these lines, which, um, which have uh, missed designators. And here is it. So we enrich what bomb portal did. It enriched uh, the data available in a, uh, in a available, which, which was available in the original bomb file. You see the same four columns, but additionally, you can see all Data, uh, all uh, data provided by our data provider. So in my case, I use pro-level subscription with Silicon Expert integration, and I can use both of them in my uh, bomb scrubbing. So you can see that I have two lifecycle columns. One is going, one is getting from uh, IHS market, another one from Silicon Expert. And for some cases, it's quite useful. For example, for this part, IHS market doesn't know about any, uh, there is no any information about life cycle, but Silicon Expert has it. Another example is uh, with um, uh, one of the challenges on scrubbing bomb for production run 
is adding alternates, is adding alternates uh, to not stop production run on your contract manufacturer. And, uh, act and uh, Bomb Portal has this capability uh, to add alternates from different uh, sources. For example, for this case, I will, we will use alternates defined in my uh, library, which means that it's a uh, company approved uh, alternates. So they were previously tested uh, and approved to be used in my company. So I will just click on add additional add alternate bomb line and uh, we'll see all alternates allow it for this bomb line for this component. I see alternates from my library and I also see additional alternates, alternates which are going from, which is coming from uh, data providers. So I will use this one. Next is that usually production run is not uh, going for one or multiple uh, bombs. Yeah, you can have a production run with a thousand of boards and we can check, uh, is there any issues related to the production run uh, to the um, number of number of production quantity. Yeah, let's put 10,000 and check what we will have. In issues tab, I see that we have supply chain issues that some of the bomb lines have insufficient stock, which uh, might be also a problem uh, for uh, my production run. And how can I uh, fix that? I have a favorite suppliers and I see estimated bomb coverage. Coverage. So I will just use additional suppliers here and we'll see that some of the, some of the problems will gone uh, after that. So right now I see that out of stock only one part or insufficient stock only two. So in this manner, we can scrap uh, any, we can scrap and prepare bomb for production run and once it will be ready, we can release it. And next, we can do a comparison with the original bomb files. So this, this capability is uh, it's, uh, not allowed in just an uh, active bomb tool, yeah? And uh, the last one, what I would like to mention is uh, how uh, the bomb portal can help for obsolescence teams or quality teams. So, as I mentioned previously, we have this used parts report or parts, parts watchdog, which is currently on beta, but what uh, it can uh, do. So, it grab all parts used in all my uh, PCB bombs and share uh, risk information in one simple page. So, uh, for example, I can be... Uh, focus it only for the critical parts. And uh, one second. Yeah, I have this filter by component type. So right now I see all used parts in my workspace. I can filter out them by, for example, ICs and easily see what the state is for IC components uh, in my workspace, in my products. I see that one IC has discounted life cycle states. And here I also see in what projects. So I easily can uh, identify what projects affected by this issue. So this is how Bomb Portal can help and uh, speed up process on bomb scrubbing and help to uh, mitigate supply chain risks. So you mentioned earlier, one of the very interesting features is grading of alternates or replacements. And I, I have to be honest, um, that is something where I have spent a lot of time trying to find either an alternate source through a broker when something is out of stock or just a totally replacement part. Um, and it's really hard to find something that will work sometimes that won't force you to go back in and change the PCB layout before you start producing something. So, so I have to ask, 
are the replacements being graded based on pin compatibility or are there other dimensions that are being used to grade the replacements? So uh, we utilize the supply chain data and parts data provided by uh, Alobe data providers. So here we currently have Octopart, IHS Market, Silicon Expert, and soon also Z2 data will be also supported. So the confidence score provided by Octopart and IHS is a, just a basic rating from one to zero on how well a component will work as an alternate. Silicon Expert, however, provides a detailed grading system that evaluates component based on various parameters. For example, rating A means that it's a pin-to-pin -pin compatible replacement with exact electrical features. So my answer is that uh, depends on the data providers supported in your workspace. You will uh, be you will use you will be able to use uh, data providers. Uh, you will be use uh, data provided by data providers uploaded to your workspace, and uh, alternates is also shared by these data providers. So we have confidence score from our partners. So it's not uh, it's not a data which was calculated on a fly, for example. So I have to ask, what are customers saying about the bomb portal? One of the comments we have gotten from some customer is that. Bomb portal allows them to replace their homegrown systems that need custom development and maintenance. Uh, this shows uh, us that we are really on the right track. Our customers already invested a lot to have their common custom solutions done. Still, this is not their core competency. Here we are coming with as an electronic focused company with long history of successful software development. Another comment is that they want more, meaning that we covered single bomb use case pretty extensively. And now people want to get multi-bomb use cases. We're working on the actually sort part reports I just shared with you. And now we started project called Consolidated Bomb, which will allow users to optimize procurement for a given product, not just a single PCB board. Also, uh, we would like to stress that we are really, re really counting on customer feedback. We are proud to develop solutions to get positive feedback from our customers. It's not to say that we are fully bottom up as we do have a vision where we want to take the product, but we are bottom up enough to give our users flexibility they need. So at least to try Bomb Portal and provide feedback so we can take this to the next level. So regarding your vision for this tool, what are some of the future developments that are planned for it? The top end request uh, is the ability to work on a level of multiple bombs versus a single board bomb. Uh, I already mentioned that we started a project called Consolidated Bomb. Another area is integration with ERP and POM, which is requested mostly by enterprise guys. And uh, pretty, pretty constantly, uh, we are getting requests about BOM review workflow. This is another example where customers start developing their own solutions as there is nothing flexible enough on the market available. Just to, to uh, clarify something, you said multiple bombs. Would that be for like a multi-board system? Yeah, uh, but I would just um, highlight that there is, there is a case called consolidated bomb for ordering when a procurement expert needs uh, to order parts for multiple bombs, which might be not just uh, not use it in one product. Yeah, you have a separate uh, PCBs just uh, needs to be assembled. But another case is multi-board bomb, uh, which is a part of the product. And this is an, a kind of next thread, and uh, it also in a roadmap, but it will be implemented with a multi-level and multi-PCB BOM approach. So I have another question here for Ananth. Um, 
we've spent a lot of time talking about and learning about the bomb portal, but of course it is part of All Team 365. So if you could, could you talk about the future vision for All Team 365 more broadly? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as, as I think in the opening of the podcast, we, we talked about some of the areas of challenge. And I think the goal for All Team 365 is to basically bridge the idea to realization processes, right? As evidenced by the bomb portal, um, one of the first areas that we're focused on is bringing data and the right data in context. So bringing the requirements in, so capturing the intent is going to come up here pretty quickly where we're going to have a requirements tool that's specifically built for electronics. Those requirements then will automatically not just map into design, but also go start going into uh, supply chain decisions. So one of the questions that you had at, asked Zach on, well, is it going to a pin level? If that's a key requirement, we can actually make that as a trigger or a rule um, in the bomb portal. And then the next step is obviously then going into EMSs and tightening sort of our, our collaboration layers with EMSs where they can come in and engage. So I think the first step that we're doing is building the right front end to have the common data layer that traverses um, sort of the decisions that are being made from start to the finish. The second is building a system of engagement on top of that system of record. So what do I mean by that? All of these co-pilot slash suggestion style um, interfaces that you're seeing with Bomb Portal, where we're reducing the cognitive load on whether you're a procurement professional or whether you're an engineer and actually ensuring that that cognitive load is symmetrical, like meaning just because I'm going to make a change um, or an engineer makes a change in the design, having the ability to put, either put cost constraints on them or vice versa, right? Um, where, because you have to do something at the PCB level and the procurement team needs to know that now the overall cost of the particular board has changed. Bringing those types of decision support tools um, and making this a system of engagement where people are actively collaborating to an outcome as opposed to just sort of for the sake of collaboration where you're getting visibility. That's something that we're working on and we're already seeing where for every sort of PCB designer that we have or for every uh, two to three PCB designers, we have one non-PCB designer coming into 365 and engaging and this is everywhere from software engineers to mechanical engineers to component folks to procurement folks to manufacturing engineers. So bringing all those roles and bringing the right context in which they can engage. That's the second piece. And then the last piece is we have the system of record and you have the system of engagement. That's where context-based AI applications become incredibly powerful, right? So obviously some, some of the things that we're looking at is can you look at the data sheet and can you mine sort of the parametric information in the data sheet and in terms of the quality assurance that Demir said where, yeah, there's third-party tools like Silicon Expert that are doing it, but what about the right type of winning combinations, right? So if you're going into a system-level modular design, maybe as you're building out the bomb and now that we understand the layout, now that we understand the functional requirements, we're now able to actually give you a suggestion on here's the right winning combinations, quote-unquote, that give you the best performance at the best cost uh, from from a particular component manufacturer. So a lot of what we're doing right now is sort of foundational to start building that system of engagement where folks are coming in and servicing the right front ends and reducing the cognitive load. And once we understand the behaviors and once we understand what's happening, we'll obviously bring more quote unquote AI based applications that will continue to accelerate that. So this all sounds very exciting and I'm excited to, to see it all develop. Um, Demir, how can anyone who is interested in all of this learn more about the bomb portal and try it for themselves? Yeah, the best way is to try it uh, uh, yourself. Everyone is invited to a free evaluation by going to our bomb portal webpage. And the free trial is on top of this page. You just put your email and get evaluation. We also have a bomb portal webinar on January 24th in Europe and in January 25th in the United States, where we will talk in greater detail about bomb portal and give you a demonstration of the use cases we discussed today. So 
Welcome to our webinar. Yeah, and anyone who's interested, uh, make sure to take a look at the show notes and you'll see some links where you can learn more about the bomb portal and um, access some great resources. Uh, thank you both so much for being here today and discussing this. Uh, in my opinion, this is a really exciting feature and I think it's going to be a great productivity booster for engineering teams. To everyone that's out there listening, we've been talking with Demir Karutinov, Product Manager at Altium, and Anant Ava, General Manager of Altium's cloud business. Make sure to check out the show notes. You'll find some links to some great resources where you can learn more about the Bomb Portal. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. You'll be able to keep up with all of our podcast episodes and tutorials as they come out. And last but not least, don't stop learning, stay on track, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. 